So we have a lot of different electrical videos on the channel, but today I wanna to give you the basics of your electrical panel. This is one of the parts of your home. It's really good to have some basic understanding and that is independent whether or not you wanna do any upgrades or if you actually wanna work on the panel, it's just good knowledge to know. So we'll start off from the outside, pointing out a few of the features and how to identify some of the basic specifications for your panel. Then we'll take the cover off, looking internally at some of those components and then we'll finish off with a few of the different issues that I've had come up in home inspections. So you can take a look and proactively get ahead of that just in case Case you're wanting to buy or sell a house in the future. All right, now looking from the outside, we have our overall cover in the access door. You're probably familiar with this because if you ever had a circuit breaker trip, you'd have to open the door and reset your breaker. Now, both on the outside of the door, somewhere on the cover itself, you probably have the brand of electrical panel, which would be the same as the brand of the circuit breakers you're using. The four main ones that usually you can get readily available if you ever have to swap out a circuit breaker or do any maintenance is Square D. This one is a Square D, and at least in our area, is the most common brand. Then you have GE, Eaton, and Siemens. Those are kind of your four most common but depending on the age, depending on your area, there could be other brands as well. So you have all your different breakers, but let's start off with the main breaker. Here on the bottom is my main breaker, and on the switch itself, you'll see a small label. It either probably has 200, 100, or possibly even 60. That is the overall amperage or the amount of current that can go through that breaker before it would trip. So this is a 200 amp service, which matches my electrical meter installed in the house. Now mine is on the low side, and that is because in this community, underground utilities are ran, so it comes up from the bottom. Most of the time, you'll actually have lines coming from a transformer on a pole over to a mast on your house, and then down, so your main is probably up top. So then you'll find the labels for your breakers. Now, I think it goes without saying, these can be way off. So when your electrical surface was first installed, hopefully everything was labeled correctly, but depending on how much maintenance and who did the work over time, these can start to really change. So never trust that whatever this says, let's say living room, and you hit the living room circuit and then you go start to swap out that outlet, not so fast. You would always wanna test that outlet. This would hopefully give you the direction of which breaker to hit, but it is by no means 100% accurate. And to be honest, usually there is quite a few errors on these. So the only other thing I'll note before we take the cover off and start looking at the internals, you'll see that you'll have the smaller circuit breakers, which again will be labeled on the switch, either 15 or 20, which means 15 amp or 20 amp. And again, that is going to mean that that circuit has a maximum delivered amperage of either 15 or 20 for a 120 volt circuit. Then you'll have the thicker breakers that are the thickness of two of these singles. That just means that that is gonna provide power to a 240 volt circuit. That commonly would be a dryer, maybe a stove, an air conditioning unit, and it is gonna be the amperage for which is labeled on the switch. Often 30, 40, 60 amps, depending on what appliance it's actually feeding power to. All right, now I will remove these bolts. Usually there is six pan head bolts or screws that you need to remove, but just be careful. You'll remove either four or five of those and then make sure you have a good hold on the cover before you remove the last one because that cover is going to come right off and you wouldn't want the edge of a cover to go inside the electrical panel because that could create a short and be a very serious situation. Now I do want to take this time, it probably goes without saying, the dividing line often between DIY and doing electrical in your house and calling in the pros is right here. Often people do not feel comfortable really going into their electrical panel, and that might be a really good guideline for you to follow. Now, if you feel comfortable with your skills, it's your own house, you've checked your local code and you can do the work. For instance, I have four open slots here where I could be expanding, maybe I wanna add something to my garage, which is a project that's coming up on the channel. So make sure you're working safely and you are comfortable if you're wanting to work inside the electrical panel. All right, 
So depending on who did the install for you, this might be a rat's nest or might be nicely routed and have a lot of rhyme or reason where things are going. And mine might be kind of inverse to what you are looking at. I have most my circuits, most my Romex coming from the top side and I have my main conductors coming from my meter coming from the bottom side. So here is the main breaker. Let's take a closer look. I'll show you what's going on. All right, for right now, you can kind of block out all the wires on the side. You're just gonna focus on the main wires coming from your meter, and then that's what's providing all the power through your main 200 amp breaker or whatever amp breaker you have. You have a 120 hot coming on the right hand side, a 120 hot coming on the left hand side. So this one will power the bus bar that goes up through all the circuit breakers on the left hand side. And this will provide 120 running the right hand side. Then you'll have your neutral coming in the middle here. And there's actually a bus bar that then will go out to all those screw terminals that you see on the left and right hand side. So remember, even if you hit the main to off, the wires coming in are still hot, both on the left and right hand side. So just always take caution when you have the cover off your panel. So we did have one circuit down here that was added later on. So this serves as a good example where you would run the Romex to your panel, you would cut the outside insulation off, then you'd have your black hot, your white neutral, and then your bare copper ground. And all those individual wires would then branch to the outside and then go to their independent location. The white, in this instance, runs all the way up to this top breaker here. And that is because this is a specific type of breaker called an arc fault where you would have the neutral coming to the breaker. For all these other breakers that are not extended back, they are not arc fault or they're not GFCI, so the only wires that you'll see coming to these breakers are just your black hots. And then your white neutral wires would be then just ran to these screw terminals. So only in the instance of the AFCI or GFCI would you have your neutrals going all the way up to your breakers. And also, depending on how new your panel is, there are some different instances where you don't have to run these independent what are called pigtails connecting down to the screw terminals here. So there might be a little bit more elegant installation if you have a newer panel. So one of the most common things a homeowner might do is if you have an issue with a breaker always tripping, you might just want to replace this 120 volt square D 20 amp breaker. Pretty easy. All you'd need to do is you'd hit your main power, turn that off, and then that would turn off power to this entire bus bar. You could undo your screw terminal here to get your hot wire off of this breaker. And then really all that's going on here is there's a mounting clip in the front and then this clip that actually connects the breaker to the bus bar. So even though these both look like they might be connected to power, they're not. This is just a front mounting clip. So once you have the wire off here, you can just pull the breaker out and then you'd actually take that down to your home improvement store. So you have the example and you can match up the exact breaker because it's not uncommon to have a few different designs, even for the same brand, if you know you have square D. And then what is actually going on inside of these breakers? So if you look inside, so like I said, this is just a mounting clip, so that can actually come out. And then you have your terminal that the wire would go into, which would then go out to your Romex. That is connected up to this braided copper wire internally. And then there's this strip, strip here, which is actually the main functional piece to the breaker. Now I'm not gonna show you this in action, but I will link a video in the description which will show the internals opened up when a short would happen, what actually happens internally. So you can dive deeper if you'd like. But then that braided wire comes over to this contact point. But in this state, the breaker is open because this contact is not connected up. So once it's flipped on, so if we turn that on, then you can see those contacts are together. 
So as it stands now in the on position, you would bring the 120 from the bus bar through this wire internally, out the screw tumoral, and then to your circuit. Then, if a load ever exceeds, in this case, 20 amps, it would heat up this portion and trip the breaker, and then that's what would trip your breaker and cut power to that circuit. So that is what the internals look like. And again, if you want to see a full demo, look down in the description. I'll, I'll send you over to another video that shows a great example of this actually tripping. Now, when it comes to inspections, things that have tripped me up in the past. In the past, you would have some of these knockouts with Romex just coming up through, but then you'd have no cable clamp or nothing protecting the Romex against the sharp edge of the box. So that can be called out in an inspection because it is a dangerous situation that can cut into the insulation of your hot and create a short. If your panel is completely full, you will want to take off the cover and see if you have one hot wire going to each of your circuits. Often, if it's a full panel, you might see two going into each circuit. And I know I've been called out in the past as that is not allowed, at least within my area. And then the last common one that's come up in my inspections is these knockouts. So if you do not have a breaker in place, but someone has popped that knockout out, then you have an opening and a safety hazard where somebody could actually put their fingers or something within the panel and cause a short. If it is removed and you need to patch the hole, you can get filler plates at pretty much any home improvement store. So it's not a big deal. And actually it's one of the easiest fixes if that comes up in an inspection. So hopefully that information gets you a little more comfortable with your electrical panel and your circuit breakers. Just good information to know as an educated homeowner. Now, if you have any questions or additional comments, jump down below the video. Let me know what you're thinking. I always like to get your guys' feedback. Now, if you guys want to continue on your electrical knowledge journey, check out this video right here. It'll show you some common mistakes seen in even new construction with almost 2 million views on that video. It's been a really popular one and we've gotten a lot of good feedback. So I appreciate you guys stopping by and we'll catch you on the next video. Take care.